Hi guys. It is an unbelievably, spectacularly beautiful, over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, I have no idea how we have stumbled into Friday. I think it's somewhere around July 20th, 2020, somewhere along those lines. And, uh, so I am pausing in my newest uh, construction project here at Bugs in a Jar Farm to bring you this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant here on Collapse Chronicles. And uh, I am Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza. And before I dive into our journey over to mongabay.com, I just want to send out a nod of appreciation to my comrade in doom brother michael dowd over on his doomer channel uh, he exercised probably the very poor judgment to air an interview that michael and i had in early april uh, so if you dare i'll put the link on here encourage you to go listen to that. I will, I will put it up here on my channel in a few days after it's run over there. But if you want to hear that interview for whatever reason, uh, it's more of a conversation between me and Michael Dowd. Just go on the link and do that. But with that pleasant task out of the way, we're going to do what we try to do every Friday here at Collapse Chronicles, and that's head over to mongabay.com to check in with Rhett Butler and the gang at Mongabay for their weekly roundup of uh, how we're heading into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour with or without help from the corona panic. So some of these stories have a corona panic edge, and some don't. But where are we going to start our, our romp around a collapsing planet? Oh, Lord, this is, uh, you, you know, I love Rhett Butler and Manga Bay, but he has been one of these apocalyptimist um uh, talking about this uh, Save the Planet scheme called RED, R-E-D-D. -D. And it's way too complicated to go into this. Uh, Rhett has been a big believer in RED. I think uh, it's, uh, it's hopium. But anyway, what is the latest update on RED, which has a corona panic angle? Wow. The UN's grand plan to save forest has not worked. Mm hmm. But some apocalyptimists still believe it can. Yes, the UN is going to save the planet by working out some giveaway to global, the global corporatocracy. Okay. So in this two part article, Manga Bay updates us on how a lofty plan meant to generate large-scale financing for global forest conservation and climate mitigation became a patchwork of individual projects and programs that have failed to achieve the central goal of curbing deforestation. Yes. Do you think so? Uh, but now I guess the UN has teamed up with the World Bank to save the planet from deforestation. Yes, the United Nations teaming up with the World Bank to save the planet's forest is like Sancho Panza teaming up with a weasel to save the chipmunks of the world. Uh-huh. Yes, this could mark the beginning of a significant new source of cash. However, challenges remain to delivering red at its intended scale, not least of which is the economic 
fallout of the corona panic, which could trip up progress just as Red looked poised to gain some real ground. Yes, chalk another one up to the economic fallout of the corona panic. Uh, derailing Red, finally the corona panic doing something good for the planet, derailing this greenwashing scheme or scam. We were, I was just talking about sea cucumbers, uh, rescuing sea cucumbers with a fellow Doomer uh, visiting here at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm. And I open up here, we're going over to Madagascar, risking death and arrest. Madagascar fishermen chase dwindling sea cucumbers. For centuries, Chinese people have sought sea cucumbers as an ingredient in traditional medicine or as a high status food. And in recent decades, you know, as Chinese people get more and more spending money, skyrocketing demand and prices have led to a marine gold rush for sea cucumbers around the world in Madagascar as elsewhere, wild sea cucumbers are declining as sea cucumber fishermen are venturing out to sea and into deeper waters to pursue them illegally using unsafe scuba gear. You know, you can kiss the sea cucumber goodbye. So uh, here is a commentary from an anthropologist living in New Guinea named Sophie Chow. Hmm. Quote, in the plantations, meaning in the palm oil plantations, there is hunger and loneliness. As Sophie fills us in on the cultural dimensions of food insecurity in Papua New Guinea, as palm oil companies take over their land, the Marind people, she writes, are struggling to feed themselves. Yep, yep, yep. Um, all right, here is how the perfume and the beauty and fragrance industry is becoming sustainable. Yeah, sustainability in the $30 billion perfume industry. I think, I they, are they still using some sort of anal gland from the civet cat to make perfume, to make some fancy perfume? They, they used to kill these civet cats which aren't really cats, uh, from Africa. And, and I guess the anal gland of a civet cat is supposed to make a uh, perfume. Anyway, enough of that. Wow. Do you think the world's rarest gorilla is in trouble? Yes. Um, This is the Afi Mountain Wildlife Sanctuary near the Nigeria-Cameroon border. Uh, there's an estimated 300 Cross River gorillas uh, left on the planet. Though officially a, a protected area, the wildlife sanctuary where he suffers from encroachment for hunting, logging, and agriculture, and rangers and resources are too few to effectively protect the sanctuary. And of course, we know just one more reason why that is. Uh, recently, says one expert, without a major commitment, you know, financial commitment to save the world's rarest gorillas, 
the sanctuary, quote, may very well be doomed. Yes. Okay, from doomed gorilla sanctuaries in sub-Saharan Africa, let's go down there to Paraguay, where we see the headline, On the Edge, Endangered Forest Cleared for Marijuana Cultivation in Paraguay. Yes, this is the Upper Piranha Forest in uh, Paraguay is one of the world's most endangered forests. The, re the eco region has already been almost entirely logged out in Brazil. Uh, in Paraguay, less than 10% of the forest remains, most of that fragmented forest islands scattered across a largely unprotected, denuded landscape. Agriculture has been the driving force of deforestation in Paraguay, with much of the country's forest cleared illegally to make way for the usual suspects, cattle, soy, corn, and sugar cane over the past half century. But now, marijuana cultivation is uh, joining the list of, uh, of uh, cash crops destroying the planet for all you uh, doomer stoners out there. From Paraguay to uh, back up to the Brazilian Amazon, talking about all of these, this growing number of dams, these mining tailings dams. You know, we've had a couple of spectacular collapses that more and more as, as uh, Bozo Nero opens up more and more of the Amazon to mining that they're, you know, putting all of their mining waste, their toxic metal uh, mud behind these unstable earthen dams and then a big flood comes through and we've seen it happen and we will see it happen again. Uh, traditional villages dread living in the shadow of Amazon tailings dams, I bet uh, they have, talking about one of these planet eaters, uh, been there since the 1970s, has become notorious for its contamination of Amazon waters with bauxite mining waste, that's for aluminum. So 26 tailing dams. Uh, any one of these could go at any minute. Brazil has suffered two catastrophic dam collapses since 2015. Yes. Uh, should they fail, tailings dams possess social, environmental, economic, and mortality risks. Do you think so? Uh, they have an associated YouTube video. That Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, by the way. Uh, here is Brazil's past finance ministers defend environment against Bozo Nero. Yes. In a surprise move, 17 former Brazilian finance ministers and central bank presidents came out strongly this week against the environmental policies of Jair Bozo Nero. Um, yep, the letter comes as pressure mounts on Bozo Nero to scrap his plan for Amazon econom economic development, which would allow mining and agribusiness on indigenous and conservation lands, leading to massive deforestation. Uh, talking about all the people now condemning 
Bozo Nero's environment record in recent days. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right, the Manga Bay tearing up, teaming up with Al Jazeera uh, with a new video on Al Jazeera's channel looking at people in New Guinea whose land was sold out from under them. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I've got another story about the Rainforest Alliance certification. Rainforest Alliance has announced new, more robust criteria for certification. Uh-huh. Please. Uh. I get so sick. I, you know, this is the other problem. I do not know why Manga Bay continues to parrot these unadulterated uh, bull hockey uh, rainforest certification and all of the rest of them. Here is yet another update on the imminent salamander apocalypse building uh, here in the U.S. Anyway, it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when the salamander apocalypse will hit. Uh, okay, let's go back down to Brazil. I guess we're going to go back to the Cerrado and look at how the planet eaters are creating their own climate. Agribusiness entities that deforested vast swaths of the Cerrado biome in Brazil to grow corn are now suffering a drop in production because of climate changes brought about by their own actions. Yes, a new study shows the loss of native vegetation has led to more warm nights and changes in rainfall patterns affecting corn crops. Everyone loses from this scenario. Yes. Okay. All right. Finally, the corona panic saving the planet. Finally, it is about time, you know, this big hydroelectric dam uh, going, being built over there in, uh, in Sumatra, uh, you know, flooding out uh, this critically endangered orangutan habitat, uh, apparently has been put on hold because of the corona panic. Yes. Um, Pandemic-related concerns may delay the construction of a controversial hydroelectric dam. We shall see. The dam is located in the only known habitat left of the critically endangered Tapanuli orangutan. There you go. being developed by the Bank of China. Do you think so? Okay, this is the second article about Indonesia's new lobster export policy. This is drawing dots how Indonesia's new lobster export policy is threatening the Javan rhino habitat. Huh. Yes, a decision allowing the resumption of lobster larvae exports threatens a national park in Indonesia that is the last refuge of the critically endangered Javan rhino. Only 72 of these rhinos are left on the planet and tend to frequent the area that has now been open to lobster fishermen under a controversial de, 
uh, decision by the fisheries ministry. Yes. Uh, the biggest threat to the rhino is human activity and a potential influx of more than 300 lobster fishermen into the rhino's habitat could prove devastating. Anybody who does not draw cannot draw the dots between buying lobster and wiping the Javan rhino off the face of the planet. Uh, everywhere you look, it is human activity taking down the planet. The common denominator in every single one of these stories is human activity. Yes. Good luck to the Mexican environmentalist pushing for reforms to laws promoting sustainable forest use. Mm hmm good luck with that. Okay, what's going on with microplastics? Our life is plasticized. As new research shows microplastics in our food, water, and air. Microplastics have become increasingly prevalent in the natural world, and a suite of studies published in the last three years, including several from this year, show that they have contaminated not only the ocean and pristine wildernesses, but the air, our food, and even our bodies. Okay, past research has indicated that there are more than five trillion, five trillion plastic pieces floating in the ocean, but a new study shows that there are probably two and a half to ten times more than 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic now in the ocean than previously thought. While another recent study found that microplastics hotspots could hold almost two million pieces of plastic per square meter. Yes. One new study shows that 136,000 tons of microplastics in the ocean are being in ejected into the atmosphere each year. Microplastics are also present in our drinking water, in our fruits and vegetables. Yes, which means that you are ingesting microplastics every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the middle of all this, we have the headline, Deer Droppings Help Researchers Understand Sambar Antler Development. Yes in the middle of all of this. Okay, now, oh yes, D, where have we heard this story before? Top Amazon deforestation satellite researcher fired by Bozo Nero. The 12-month deforestation rate in the Brazilian Amazon has risen 96% since Bozo Nero took office and the extent of deforestation over the past year is the highest ever recorded since Brazil's own National Institute of Space Research started releasing statistics in 2007. Three days after publication of this newest data, the Bozo Nero administration removed researcher Lubia Venice from the position of general coordinator for the space agency's Earth Observation Agency, which oversees the monitoring of Amazon deforestation. Do you think so? 
Remember last August, Bozo Nero fired the agency's director, Ricardo Galvao, after he published similar data showing rapidly rising Amazon deforestation rates. Yes. Uh, analysts note that the space agency's report on soaring deforestation in Brazil and the dismissal of, you know, this latest uh, bureaucrat both come as Bozo Nero is being assailed by criticism from international and Brazilian businesses uh, as well as EU nations for Brazil's poor environmental record, especially regarding deforestation and climate change. Well, we just heard about sea cucumbers in Madagascar, and now the Madagascar mud crab uh, is in hot water. Yes, as the Madagascar government has granted permits to export live mud crabs to five Chinese companies. Yes, do you think so? Uh, kiss goodbye the Madagascar mud crab. Here's the latest story. Guys, I have to uh, pardon myself a minute. I have a planet-eating chicken pie in the toaster oven, which I forgot about. I have to go, uh... I have to go turn off my planet-eating chicken pie. Anyway, so here's the latest story, you know, they, where they find some new species, and by the time they even discover it, it's already uh, almost extinct. This is some new frog just discovered in Sumatra, already threatened by oil palm plantations and new roads. Do you think so? Just as scientists have discovered the new frog, the habitat where the frog is found is being devastated by encroaching oil palm plantations and infrastructure projects. Uh, there you go. Here's another story on shark finning. You know, if we can't put an end to shark finning, good lord. Uh, if you remember who Dorothy Stang is, life as an Amazon activist, quote, I don't want to be the next Dorothy Stang. Socio-environmental activists are an endangered species in the Brazilian Amazon today with regularly occurring assassination-style killings like those of activist Chico Mendez and sister Dorothy Stang, creating an ongoing climate of fear. Um, talking about how 57 environmental activists gunned down in 2017 uh, anyway, in recent years, Zapaya, who's this person writing this article, has been repeatedly pursued by a white pickup driven by two armed thugs, but police continue to fail to respond to her pleas for help. So you can kiss goodbye, Juma Zipaya. She knows she has a target on her head. She will not be alive within a year. Uh, you will not believe this, that a logging concession 
green-lighted in Malaysian Borneo during the corona panic crisis lacks the free, prior, and informed consent of indigenous communities required by the Malaysia Timber Certification Scheme. Should be scam. Uh, home to indigenous Ken, Kenya Jamak people and a multitude of animal species, the logging company is now, nevertheless, within its legal rights to cut down the rainforest there. Uh, do you think so? Here is an article. I can't believe we haven't seen this one before. Now that turtle, sea turtles are nesting in the corona panic. Take a wild guess what the corona panic means for sea turtle egg predation since the economic lockdowns are not allowing the sea turtle beach rangers to patrol. The sea turtle egg collectors have free reign to eat every sea turtle egg on the planet because nobody is allowed to stop them because of the corona panic. Yes, you will not believe this. As the corona panic curbs patrols, this is looking at Nicaragua, turtle eggs being poached. Yes, this is thousands of threatened sea turtles lay their eggs every year on this beach, but enforcement activities have been halted due to the corona panic. Park rangers, well, former park rangers, I guess, fear that the lack of surveillance could lead to massive poaching of turtle eggs. Poaching has previously increased when the country's political crises left the beaches unprotected. And this is true for any beach pretty much on the planet where sea turtles nest. Chalk it up to the economic lockdowns of the corona panic wiping out sea turtle eggs. Yep, yep, yep. Wow, you will never believe this. Indonesia approves new coal road project through endangered forest that hosts tigers and elephants. The Indonesian government has granted permission to a coal miner to build a road that will cut through the highly biodiverse Harapan Forest in Sumatra. Yes, the new road is being built for transporting coal from the company's mine to coal-fired power plants. Do you think so? Yes. Conservationists and indigenous communities have warned that the new road will devastate the ecosystem, create more habitat fragmentation, and facilitate further encroachment for logging, hunting, and agriculture. Okay, from Indonesian coal roads to the Siberian heat wave. Let's go up above the Arctic Circle, Siberian heat drives Arctic ice extent to record low for early July. On June 17th, the Siberian town registered a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the highest temperature ever recorded in history above the Arctic Circle, and high temperatures across the region are driving impacts of great concern to scientists, firefighters, and those who maintain vulnerable Arctic infrastructure, including pipelines, roads, and building. 
Yes, the Siberian heat has now flowed over the adjacent Arctic Ocean, where it has triggered record early sea ice melt in the Laptev Sea and record low Arctic sea ice extent for this time of year. Yes, the heat has also triggered wildfires in Siberia, releasing 59 million metric tons of CO2 into the atmosphere last month alone and drying out the region's tundra. Yes. Uh, also at risk from the rapid rise in warmth is civil and military infrastructure built atop thawing permafrost, permafrost, meaning temper frost. You know, talking about how 21,000 tons of diesel have already spilled into two rivers due to the collapsing permafrost. Uh, and worse could come as the world continues warming. Do you think so? Okay, from the Arctic back to the Amazon deforestation rate climbs higher as Amazon rainforest moves into the burning season. Yes, deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon climbed higher for the 15th straight month in a row, reaching levels not seen since the mid-2000s, according to data released today. Uh, you know, by Brazil's space agency, which got the woman releasing the data fired. Uh, Brazil's satellite-based deforestation alert system detected uh, 1,034 square kilometers hitting the ground last month, 89% higher than last June. Yes, the extent of deforestation rate, uh, the extent of deforestation over the past year is the highest deforestation on record since they began releasing their numbers in 2007. The 12-month rate has risen 96% since Bozo Nero took over. Uh, here is another article about the unacceptably high risk of tailings dam failure in Canadian Miners Amazon project. We already talked about that. Here is some article on some plan to rescue the critically endangered Western chimpanzee, where poaching, habitat loss, and disease are identified as the key threats to the species. Yes, all of these threats were found to be exacerbated by the high rate of human population growth in West Africa, resulting in rapid agricultural expansion and a demand for economic development projects. There you go. Kiss the western chimpanzees. We mentioned this last week. One-third of Madagascar's lemur species now on the brink of extinction. Of the 107 lemur species left in Madagascar, <clears throat> 103 of 107 are threatened with extinction, with 33 of them now recognized as critically endangered on the IUCN. In addition to lemurs, one half of the primate species left in Africa are also under threat, including the eastern gorilla, the world's largest living primate. Uh, also in danger of extinction, 
How about the North Atlantic right whale? The European hamster. There you go. Uh, all right. What's going on in the Philippine mangrove forest that was just starting to recover from an oil spill? We have a new oil slick threatening the same Philippine mangrove forest just beginning to recover from an earlier oil spill. An explosion aboard a power barge off the Philippines has spilled up to a quarter million liters of fuel oil threatening local communities and mangroves and sea, and sea grass habitats. 300 families of, uh, have already been evacuated. The mangrove forest was just beginning to recover from a 2006 oil spill and now it starts all over again. Yes, you will not believe this. A Brazilian meat packer expands with World Bank funding. Yes, do you think so? The World Bank continuing to fund meat packing uh, plants in the Brazilian Amazon. Guys, I could go on and on and on with this, but I realize I'm talking to myself and that uh, planet uh, eating chicken pie in the oven is making me very hungry and then I have to get back to building my deck outside of the, um, the little bivouac at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So if you enjoyed uh, Manga Bay's little depressing compilation of doom, please give Rhett Butler your thumbs up and do uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're over here. And if you want to listen to that interview, that conversation between me and uh, Michael Dad, I have the link. I will be back soon with another dose of doom and gloom. Bye guys.